Hey folks, as promised last week, today we are talking about Classic Doom and how to play it. So first, what is Classic Doom? As mentioned last time, Classic Doom is everything that sounds like Sabbath or Candlemas or anything else that your dad had on vinyl and used the vinyl to roll the seeds out of his pot with. So we're looking at the early 70s, late 60s, up until the late 70s, early 80s, 10 years of fantastic Doom bands. And after that there is obviously some more fantastic Doom bands, but they're usually already a bit more influenced by more modern styles of guitar music, and less influenced by the sound of the 60s bands, as mentioned last time, Mountain Blue Cheer, the like. So, what do we have? We have a guitar, standard size guitar, no baritone guitars at that time really. This is a Parker, which is would not have been available at that time, but Tony Iommi used to play an SG, which is 24.75 inch scale, which this is as well. And then I have this guitar, an E, this is my E standard guitar. And I hear you screaming in the comments already, Wait a second, Sabbath used to tune down all the way to C sharp standard. Yes, that is true, Sabbath used to tune down to C sharp standard. By the way, Rage of Zombie does the same thing, for obvious reasons. Um, because Sabbath knew one universal truth. If you might want to make stuff heavy, tune low, play slow. But there is more reason to playing slow than just the, that it's heavy. This is a guitar in E, alright? And I can... <laughs> And you can chug on it and you can play reasonably fast stuff on 10s, um, which is not what I use this guitar for mostly, but you could if you want to um, play relatively fast. Now if we are going to, uh, if we just tune this down to C sharp, to see where Mr. Iommi would have lived. Now we get the Sabbath sound out of this. And how do we manage to get the Sabbath sound? Well, for one, it is tuned to C sharp. But the second, and I think this is the most important reason, that we get this low and slow doom vibe is these are a set of tens on here and they're dropped to C sharp. I, I don't know if you can tell this but, uh, from the screen, but I can bend this string to, to next week, basically. And the guitar lives in this semi-tuned state at all times because, let's face it, your fingers will exert some form of pressure on the strings and they will undoubtedly not stay perfectly in tune while you're playing. So how does this affect the sound? Well, firstly, if we were to play this thrashy sort of riff, it can be done, I'm certain, but it is really uncomfortable on these loose strings to play. And it's, it's muddy. It's muddy already. You get a ton of high end and then nothing and then there's a bit of a low frequency rumble there. Which is perfect for the sound that we are going for, for this Sabbath candle mass sound. Let's hear it. This shifts your note from note to an uncomfortable in-between note, some microtonal shift, which is something that, we're speaking of the 70s here, was not really common in Western society at all, and it made listeners feel weird and strange, and as if the devil himself was playing the guitar, which I guess is what they were going for. So, 
Yes, that's basically the Tony Iommi sound, and this influences our playing so that we can't play really fast. So all the thrash riffs that would have been 10 years later are really uncomfortable to play on this. Black metal riffs has not yet been invented, but if they had been, they too would be very sloppy sounding and really all over the place. So what we're left with is basically playing power chords. This evil sounding mud basically and you could you can ha hear you can f I, I challenge you to this get your guitar and tune it down to C sharp your regular standard 24.75 it won't be that big of a deal on the Fender scale so 25 and a half um, inch uh, guitar or a baritone because from baritone you're, you're moving upwards so you, you you really need like a, a 24 and 3 quarters scale guitar to actually feel the the Tony Iommi experience. And with this sound, everything sounds like Sabbath or Candlemas. Because you cannot play fast at all with your right hand, there's no chance of playing anything rhythmically, uh, uh, any, any difficult rhythms on your picking hand, because it's just got to get lost in the mud anyways, so why bother? And then what we get are long sounds. It's really impossible to hold. To hold any note for any amount of time without it shifting one way or another. Just because the, the string tension is so low. Because the, the movement of the string, you know, so this, this vibrating of the string We'll simulate this. Kind of stops where your finger is, so it moves back here, but not over here. So it goes to here, and this vibrates, and this is exaggerated. Of course, of course, the string goes on over here and vibrates very fast and high pitch energy. But over here, where we pick up the string, the vibration is enough to change the pitch of the note because the string is so loose. All right, are you getting me? It is physically semi-impossible to play actually in tune. It is always slightly off. And it's this unsettling feeling that you get from this. This is really somber. So why would you want to play like this? Why would you want to play a guitar that is practically impossible to play in tune. Well, the only thing that makes sense for me is that you want these microtonal shifts that you get just from the, the string vibrating to the point where your finger touches it. And that vibration over time decreasing and thus shifting the pitch again because your the interaction between your finger on the fret and the string changes and that's enough to change the pitch ever so slightly, which is here. Let's just... Even on an open string, you get this sort of sound where the, where the note is slightly higher at the beginning and then drops off as the string stops vibrating that much. We can obviously... We can mitigate that a little bit by playing with our fingers, but Tony did not do that, so why? Why would you do this? And the only real explanation is because he didn't need to play really fast shreddy stuff because it wasn't invented yet. Second, because because it sounds heavy as shit. Like, I mean... Bend 
tune entire notes, chords, whatever, ever so slightly out of tune, just... It has this strangled sort of feeling that you... that doesn't quite fit with anything. And it's... it's gnarly and it's dark and it's maddening and it's... it's, it's just... yeah. It's the sound. If you want to sound like a classic Doom band from the heyday of the Doom sound that we're talking about here, pick up a standard scale length guitar at 24 and 3 quarters or 25 and a half, somewhere in between that range, 24 to 26, no longer than that, and tune it down a lot. And if you have to, put on lighter strings so that you get this out of tune sort of sound and then once you have that it's just a matter of not playing a lot of rhythm and just enjoying the sound you get from this <laughs> As I've said before, and many other people have as well, early rock music is mainly just a way to find out what to do with all of that noise that amplifiers were now able to make. How do you use all of this volume and distortion? And the answer is, if you're using a highly distorted amp, as I'm simulating here with two oranges, and you slap a, um, an overdrive in front of it, or in my case, an MX distortion. Notes sort of sustain forever. A lot longer than you do on a jazz guitar played acoustically, for example. So, why wouldn't you experiment with that sound? Because it's new at that point in time, more or less. Like, Hendrix doesn't go... and just sits there for half an hour. But Sun does. And Sun are the drone doom band, as everybody should know. And they've described it as they're trying to find out what their amps sound like when they're pushed to the absolute edge. And I think it's pretty much the same thing for these early Doom players, they're just trying to find out what does this equipment do when I push it harder than it's supposed to be pushed. And that's when you get into this. Into this evil sounding territory of just sheer despair. Of this, this, this soundscape where everything is gone and dead and lifeless. I think that's how you get a classic Doom sound. And then just play riffs with the techniques that would have been available at the time. So, no tapping, because Van Halen hasn't been tapping that much yet. No sweep arpeggios. And no, no really fast, sort of shreddy... Um, thrash riffs because it's really impossible to play that on this loose a string and then basically you got classic doom leave a thumbs up if you liked the video subscribe if you want more of this next week we're talking about drone doom and how that came to be a thing all right thanks for hanging around see you next week bye Woo.